today. New trend insights from Snap reveal why consumers use its app. One brand's campaign strategy is based on bad reviews. A lesson in don't do this marketing. TikTok introduces an education program designed for agencies. And Facebook wants you to post reels from third-party apps now. It's Wednesday, April 6th. I'm Todd Maffin. Here's what you missed today in digital marketing. Well, after trolling us on April Fool's Day, Twitter has confirmed it is finally adding an edit button. Well, sort of. The platform plans to test an edit button in the coming months before committing to it. And they say it will first be available to Twitter Blue premium subscribers before being rolled out to everyone. Yes, it will be pay to edit, at least for the time being. The news comes via that viral poll we told you about yesterday from Elon Musk, who's now Twitter's largest shareholder. The poll simply asked his 80 million followers, do you want an edit button? Nearly three quarters of the almost 4.5 million votes said, you see, Y-S-E. Get it? Like they misspelled yes and needed an edit button. According to Twitter, the edit button has been in develop actually since last year and wasn't prompted by the poll. Besides being able to edit typos in your brand's tweets, there are a few variables to consider, including how long will users have to edit a tweet? Will there be a limit on how many times you can edit a tweet? What will the indication look like that a tweet has been revised? And what happens to retweets if an author changes the tweet drastically? And finally, what can we get Elon Musk to give us next on Twitter? Snap has released its Snapchat Generations report, which examines how users are interacting with the app and how brands can better align their content around trends. Here is a look at the report. First of all, why are consumers using the app? The company claims that Snapchat is the number one platform where people enjoy sharing what life actually is like or random funny moments. The study really sells the idea that its platform is a place for more private interactions and intimate sharing among personal groups. As a result, it recommends that brands, of course, do the same and that openness and transparency are the key to targeting its users. The report also offers some insight into e-commerce and Snap's role as a social shopping channel, as it also claims to be the number one platform for users who share purchases. Snapchat says consumers are using AR tools to try out potential purchases before they buy and that more than 90% of users are interested in using AR for shopping. The platform suggests making shopping more social and interactive to its target audience. The full report is worth the read if your brand is looking to gain a better understanding of how to connect with users on the app. A link to download the report is in today's premium newsletter. You know, usually you try to avoid brutally honest reviews about your brand. But as part of a marketing stunt, a ketchup brand actually sought out bad reviews. The ad campaign by the company Curtis Brothers devised an experiment in which TripAdvisor users would review the ketchup without realizing it. The ketchup found restaurants with the worst ratings on TripAdvisor, then placed ketchup bottles of, you know, their brand, on tables, and then waited to see if that restaurant's TripAdvisor score uh, went up. And if that product would, I, I, I suppose, maybe indirectly, we should say, improve the negative reviews. Funny thing is, it actually kind of worked. Some of the restaurants that started offering the ketchup went from receiving reviews like avoid and walk on by and forget it to reviews like why not and not the worst option. <laughs> Following consumer reviews, the brand placed ads next to restaurants to show the effect of Curtis Brothers ketchup. The campaign concluded that the best thing a great ketchup can do is make not okay food okay. Trolling consumers on April Fool's Day might seem like a good idea at the time, but one company is learning the value of thinking these stunts through. The beer subscription brand Beer Company thought a funny prank would be to trick its customers into thinking they had won a black card, which gives them a lifetime subscription to the beer club. Here's what consumers thought they won. Free delivery of eight beers a month, free delivery site-wide, access to a member's area with special pricing, a gold-plated members-only glass, and a personalized gold-engraved black member's card. Customers got an email with the subject line, Urgent, you've won a black card, with an image that says, You are this month's winner, free beer for life. 
and a prompt to use the code SLUFLERPA to claim the prize. To make matters worse, their promotional message was also sent to customers by text. By midday, those who had signed up to claim their prize were informed that no, they'd been fooled, and that the code they'd used was actually April Fools backwards. The Advertising Standards Authority received over 40 complaints within hours of the cruel prank being revealed. The ASA has not decided if it will launch an investigation. So much of the online economy is about set it and forget it. And that's great for convenience, but sometimes bad for our wallet. Because if that's a membership or subscription, you're still being charged after you forget it. Get in control of your subscriptions with Truebill. Truebill is the app that helps you identify and stop paying for subscriptions you don't need, want, or simply forgot about. On average, people are saving thousands a year with Truebill. See all your subscriptions in one place. Keep the ones you want, cancel the ones you don't, right from the app. And your Truebill concierge is there when you need them to cancel unwanted subscriptions, so you don't have to. No talking to humans, no difficult conversations, Truebill has more than 2 million users and helps save them $100 million. Start canceling your unused subscriptions at Truebill.com slash digital. Go right now. Truebill.com slash digital. It could save you thousands a year. Truebill.com slash digital. This episode is brought to you by The Jordan Harbinger Show. Want a new podcast to look forward to each week? One that's entertaining, informative, and packed with actionable content? Jordan dives into the minds of fascinating people, from CEOs to athletes, authors to scientists. Two recent episodes you may want to sample, The Right Way to Quit a Job, that's episode 641, and Jordan's interview with LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman on Surprising Entrepreneurial Truths, that's episode number 611. He's also got a strangely relatable weekly segment called Feedback Friday, where he covers advice on things like networking and asking for a raise. Jordan is smart, easy to listen to. You will be hard-pressed to find an episode without excellent conversation and advice that can directly improve your life. Search for The Jordan Harbinger Show. That's H-A-R-B as in Bravo, I-N as in November, G-E-R on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, or visit jordanharbinger.com slash start. Could you use some help with marketing on social media's current golden child? TikTok has unveiled CAP University, an education program designed specifically for people in creative agencies. The Creative Agency Partnership Program, that's what CAP stands for, lets marketers choose which courses they wish to take, set their curriculum, and even attend office hours with TikTok's CAP team. The first semester classes include TikTok 101, which should give you a baseline knowledge of the platform, as well as foundational statistics and data. Number two, TikTok from briefing to pitching. Number three will be concepting and creating for TikTok. Concepting? Is that even a word? Uh, Number four is trends and music licensing. And number five is collaborating with creators. Classes are in session beginning April 19th and run until May 18th. Boy, Meta really wants you to use Reels. Even the format's ugly cousin, Facebook Reels. The company announced today a new sharing to Reels feature that will let users share videos to Facebook Reels from third-party apps. The update lets developers add a Reels button to their apps so users can post clips directly to Reels while taking advantage of that platform's editing tools. Sharing to Reels is already integrated with partners Smool, Vita, and Viva Video. Every brand is hackable, even Justin Bieber's. Vivo, which calls itself the world's leading music video network, is reviewing its security today following an incident where the YouTube profiles of Taylor Swift, Kanye West, and others were hacked. All of the channels have hundreds of millions of subscribers. While YouTube did not respond to requests for comment, Vivo said in a statement that, quote, some videos were directly uploaded to a small number of Vivo artist channels earlier today by an unauthorized source. No pre-existing content was accessible to the source, while the artist channels have been secured and the incident resolved, as a best practice, Vivo will be conducting a review of our security systems. Five days ago, we told you that the Google Ads console was experiencing latency issues. If you are still experiencing delays on the platform, 
It's still not you. It's still Google. The company confirmed earlier this morning that the issue has been resolved for some users. Quoting the update, Google ad service has been restored for some users, and we expect a resolution for all in the near future. The affected users are able to access Google ads, but are seeing error messages, high latency, and or other unexpected behavior. Currently responsive search ads might experience a higher than normal latency during the ad review process. Now here's one of the downsides of licensing or selling off brands. P&O Cruises has resorted to launching marketing campaigns to remind people it's not the same company as P&O Ferries. This because P&O Ferries fired 800 employees and replaced them with cheaper workers. It was also revealed that the workers were paid below minimum wage. To distance itself from the ferry company, P&O Cruises has placed full-page ads in several national newspapers, as well as a video on social media and a YouTube ad. One of the ads has a screenshotted tweet that reads, I hope P&O are boycotted by every customer who wants a cruise. And then underneath that, the text reads, We've received a lot of messages like the one above during the past week. Some people have thought that this relates to P&O Cruises, but it doesn't. Our names may begin with P&O, but that's where the similarity ends. We are separate organizations and have been for 20 years. Well, I think we know what's happening with the ads, and I think we have a at least temporary fix for it. The issue is that the platform provider that we use, Red Circle, which we love, um, has a mid-roll position that by its nature is two ads. And there's no ability to adjust that. We can't say one ad mid-roll, one ad post-roll. The, the ad slot they have is two ads. And because it's programmatic, it just kind of gets dumped in there without us doing anything directly. So the solution that we're going to do is to eliminate the pre-rolls, because, I mean, who likes pre-rolls, right? And, um, and we are working with their platform to try to figure out if we can get that mid-roll position down to one. Um, and then I think it'll be in balance. We had not intended to spam everyone with ads. It was not a move to try to get people over into the premium podcast, which, by the way, has no ads and more stories and weekend episodes. So anyway, no one likes ads, uh, including myself. So I hear you. Hopefully it'll be better. Talk to you tomorrow.